What's up? Welcome back. Today, let's talk about my sniper rifle. Wait, hold on. Shit. I thought I heard the trees talking again. Never mind. Hold on. My sniper rifle. Okay, so it's much better. The trees have not talked or not talking anymore. Okay, backstory. I have never been to sniper school. Um, I went to a, I believe they called it a DDM course um, when we were going back to Iraq in late 05, yeah, December of 05. Um, they were implementing um, some longer range rifles and more of long range optics to regular infantrymen um, because we were getting engaged for farther distances so they wanted regular infantrymen to learn how to engage at a little bit farther distances than what they were normally engaging. Um, I was a squad leader at the time. I went to that class to train the trainer type of deal. Um, we shot out to I want to say it was like 500, roughly, something like that, with 5.56, five, and then roughly the same distance with 7.62. This course was nothing special. It was more like urban uh, oriented, and it was, um, there was no stocks, no nothing like that. Just kind of like how to do a hide in an urban environment and how to engage shit angles and stuff like that <laughs> that is my extent of sniper knowledge um i do have a bunch of buddies who were legitimate snipers um talk to them a lot i read a bunch of books watched a bunch of youtube so there you go now i'm a delta force sniper i'm sorry Navy SEAL sniper, that's better. Okay, so this gun here started its life as a Weatherby Vanguard 338 Win Mag. I bought this gun in 2009, 2010, something like that, um, when I was really getting into um, hunting and what my mindset or my thought process was I wanted something that would kill anything in North America. <clears throat> After talking to a bunch of people at the time, 2009, 2010-ish, um, a 338 Win Mag was the way to go. Okay, um, this rifle came completely black. It came um, it didn't have any rail and it did not have a uh, magazine capacity. You just had the three rounds that you put in the top. Um, so recently, I don't know why, but I got on this thing of, I have a bunch of guns in my safe that I hardly ever shoot. Maybe I might want to start shooting them again, blah, blah, blah. So I bust out this bad boy and I realized that the times had passed us by. We needed to update this bad boy and we needed to get her done fast not really but you know well, that's what i thought so what i did was i went online i started learning all kinds of stuff and doing all kinds of things um ryan kleckner um i bought his book and i watched a bunch of videos of his youtube videos and that dude can break stuff down very nicely even for the morons like me who just pretend to be snipers, he can break it down very nicely. And the, a lot of stuff that he said, I implemented. Um, and then I, I found some other um, YouTube pages that I, you know, that I watched a bunch of. And it was, it was good. It was educational. Um, I learned a lot, which was really cool. Um, because I haven't, you know, in, in the shooting world, you, you pick up little pits and pieces here and there, but in this world, man, I sat down, I took notes, I studied, it, it was it was interesting. So, I went on a quest. I said, how can I make this better? Um, this did not have a free-floating barrel. So I said, okay, first things first, let's make it a free-float barrel. And then let's bed the action, okay? So, 
what I did was I grabbed my Dremel tool and I went to town on the stock here until I could take a piece of paper and slide it up and down the barrel. Um, what I did then was all the hollowed out pieces that was on the bottom of the stock, I basically um, took some JB Weld, I roughed it up, I took some JB Weld and I'll throw some pictures or video or whatever here. And then um, I put JB Weld in the bottom the reason why I used JB Weld, and there was a certain kind, I can't remember exactly what kind it was, but the reason why I used it was because um, everybody said that the temperature rating on JB Weld was way higher, so it could withstand the heat of the barrel if you were to you know, fire a bunch of rounds in succession. So that's why I went with the JB Weld up front here, underneath here. Once I got that all stiffened up, I again went through with my Dremel tool, um, until I gotta take a piece of paper, go underneath of it, right? Um, then I bedded the action. Um, what bedding the action means is, so the action, there's just two screws underneath here that hold the stock in, let's see. Boom, here and here, okay? Or it holds the action in, right? Hold the action to the stock. What bedding does is you take a special, I guess it's like a resin, um, you pour it in here, you put this down, you screw it tight, and that makes it so the exact dimensions of the action and are bedded into the exact dimensions of the stock. So it's like a perfect fit. Boop. There's no play, there's no slop, anything like that. First time I've ever done this, it was um, not that hard, not really. Um, I got a little bit worried when I was uh, taking the screws out to undo it to see the bedding and one of the screws didn't want to come out very much i just grabbed my um like and, and it came out that scared me a little bit but easy fix nothing um nothing really went wrong it was really really easy um i took the butt stock or the butt plate off the little rubber piece i noticed the stock and i'm not even joking was filled with like the expanded foam that you would put like in the in the crevices of your garage so mice don't get in. Um, I don't know why they did that. So what I did was I took all that out um, the best I could. I poured some epoxy resin in the bottom um, and then I took some BBs from like a BB gun and put a whole bunch of BBs in there and then filled this thing completely up with epoxy resin, um, the entire stock all the way up to the brim, and then once that dried, I put the butt plate back on. What that did is gave it a bunch of weight to this. Um, so there's a bunch of weight up front. You know, obviously the action of the barrel are heavy. Um, the scope is obviously heavy, the, the mag and the rounds. But then there's a bunch of weight back here. That took, gosh, um, half the recoil out, probably. It took enough recoil out that my 15-year-old son could shoot it. And he didn't have any issues so and this is a 338 wind mag okay this is this thing kicks like a damn mule um but nowadays it doesn't i was blown away so that was awesome then i said okay i needed i did not want the the three rounds that go in here because i want to put this plate on let's see that plate i want to put the picatinny rail plate on there in order to have a better mount for scope so obviously if you put this plate on there, it you know leaves that there and then it's really hard to get the rounds in there. I did not want that to happen, so I wanted um, to be magazine fed. So after a whole bunch of research and a whole bunch of ser searching online, I found um, that the Weatherby Vanguard and the HOA, H-O-W-A, I wanna say it's HOA 1500, um, are the same as far as like the chassis and all that stuff. Um, and it's a long action gun. So I bought, um, all this is like, this is no kid. It's just the magazine itself. Um, and this magazine is, I, I screwed up and painted it a little bit. Ugh, I need to grind that off. So it's better, more better is, but it's just a magazine. And then this base plate is just like a piece of polymer. Um, and it just goes right in. And I was worried that it was going to be like super hard. And oh man, it's just so damn easy. I was, I should have done this like 10 years ago. So put that in, super, super easy. <laughs> um, honestly, way too easy. I thought it was way too easy. Um, 
the Pictine Real base plate, um, everything, all the YouTube people, everything that I read, everything that I watched said don't skimp on the Picatinny rail or the um, optic um, brain fart, whatever these things are called to hold the scope down. What the fuck? Scope rings. Jesus. Okay. Don't skip on the Picatinny rail or the scope rings. I'm leaving that in there. Um, so I did not. Uh, I got the Picatinny rail from Vortex. Um, uh, this is a Vortex scope. I got Vortex scope rings and a Vortex scope. See, vortex. Can you see that? Um, this scope here is the, I want to say it's the diamond back. Um, I watched this video on this dude. He's a hunter. Um, and he did best scopes for under $500. If you Google that, best scopes for under $500, rifle scopes for under $500, you'll probably come up with that. I can't remember the dude's name. Um, but he does a whole bunch of scopes. This was the best scope. It was like 400 bucks, I want to say, right about there, okay, um, I also got the, I guess the Horus or the Christmas tree reticle, um, in Milrad, because that was, um, it's the new hotness, but, um, it's a lot easier to understand, and it's a lot easier to dial than dialing minute of angle, if you dial minute of angle, you're dialing like 43 minute of angle, and then you're dialing 5 MRAD, so, mil radiance, whatever, so got that um i got the um scope caps from oh geez what are they called i can't remember something 1100 mil works or something like that whatever they're called i got those scope caps they're really nice i wanted scope caps but i didn't want something that was crappy these are really nice um and then i painted it not like perfectly but it's you know it's cool i guess it's like tannish I got some rubber bands on here to put some veg, so that way it's cool. And then when I do camouflage it, I'll throw a picture in here, you can see that. Okay, so, I put this thing all together. It took a month, maybe more, to, you know, I didn't buy all the parts at once. I'm not made out of money, so I, you know, bought parts. I, you know, did the work on here. It took like a month or two total to kind of get everything done. And then I went out and shot it. Now, when I went out and shot it, um, I was expecting it to be like really easy, like like kind of like zeroing a red dot. However, it's not because this thing, like I said, even though it doesn't like put a bruise on your shoulder anymore, it still kicks pretty damn bad. So, and I didn't have um, like a rifle table or anything like that. I was like laying on the ground. Where I was laying, there was a, it was a slight uphill and then there was a little berm that kind of went up and on the crest of the berm my target was like right here because it was windy and chilly and cold and excuse after excuse after excuse the thing is is i need to go back out i did not shoot enough rounds to get it super zeroed um i know that this gun is at a very minimum a minute of angle gun at 100 yards and I was throwing one round like consecutively and it just pissed me off. And then before you know, I couldn't feel my damn fingers. It was, it was cold. So we just stopped, broke out some pistols and some ARs, had a little bit of fun and then went home. Um, I've learned over my many moon of shooting that once you start getting frustrated, you need to go ahead and take a break, take a break, chill out, um, switch weapons, whatever. We had like a shooting contest where we had, um, shotgun shells on a little two by four at like 10 yards or something like that and me and my son were um shooting them um i shot all of them he did not dad wins again but overall my son shot this he liked it i shot it i liked it um one of my best buddies was there um he came down for thanksgiving he shot it he liked it um, the reticle the scope the gun, everything I've done to it, everything is really, really nice. I have zero complaints. Um, I just need to quit being a pussy and to get out there and shoot it. That's it. Um, I'm getting a shooting cable for Christmas, so I, that will make life a little bit easier for me. Um, uh, let's see. Lessons learned for this. Um, you know, it was it, it was a lot of lessons learned. Um, 
the process of doing all this was really, really interesting because I'd never done it anything like this before. Um, I'm not a long range guy. I've never pretended to be a long range guy. It's not really my thing. Um, but I'll tell you this, it was really fun. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this and I think I'm going to, um, I'm not going to be like a long range guru or nothing like that, but, um, I'm going to have fun shooting this. Not that much fun because a box of 20 rounds is a hundred dollars. So I'm not going to have like a whole bunch of fun. I'll have like more like a little bit of fun because damn. Um, anyways, that's it. Um, I'll throw in some videos of all the stuffs. Um, if you got any questions, man, hit me up. Um, I believe these are, these are the old school Harris bipods. I think that's the only thing I didn't cover. Um, like the old school Harris bipods. They're still good though. They still work just fine. Um, I want to say that's about it. All right. So anyways, now I have a sniper rifle and I'm pretty much a sniper. So, um, yeah. Hashtag sniper. Um, hey, so let's just say this. If you got some old guns in your safe that you've never shot, that you've never used, um, like I have now, my my new project is going to be, I have a 30-30 lever action. I want to kind of pimp that bad boy out. Um, that's going to be my new project. So if you got stuff in your safe or in your closet or whatever, it's just sitting there collecting dust, you haven't shot it for a while, man, break one of the bad boys out. Go out, shoot it, have a little fun. And you might see, like I did, and be like, you know what? Like, dude, this thing is, you know, 20 years ago, this was cool. But nowadays, man, we have surpassed that. So let's go ahead and uh, update it. And that's what I did, man. I updated everything. And, man, I'm super happy with this. Um, I really am. And uh, that's about it. If you got any questions, um, hit me up down below. And I will try to help you out as much as possible. So in the long range world, are you an asset or a liability? Right now, I'm pretty much still a liability. So you know what, but I'm working on it. All right, all right, all right, later man.